Thank you for joining us for a second session of CPT coding. This uh, session will be dedicated to cranial procedures. We're lucky to have with us Kim Pollack uh, from uh, Karen Zopko and uh, Director of Spine Surgery, uh, Joe Cheng from Vanderbilt University. Uh, Kim and Joe uh, do not have any conflicts of, conflicts of interest to report, and we really do appreciate their time for this very valuable topic. Please take it away. Great. Thanks, Dr. Cohen. Dr. Chang? Thanks, Aaron. It's a pleasure. Um, like I said, you know, kind of like I said for the first part, this is going to be an incredible session going over craniotomy procedures and non-spine coding uh, with cranial procedures. Certainly, you know, I'm really proud of the relationship that we've had with AANS and KZA as far as creating coding courses, you know, coupling consultant coders along with physicians to get you the best and really the largest breadth of understanding these coding principles. With that, I'll hand it back to Kim. Thanks, Dr. Chang. Um, and welcome to the second half of the coding webinar uh, focused on cranial and non-spine procedures. Um, we've already discussed the, um, what's included in the Global Surgical Package and using modifiers to optimize your revenue. So if you haven't listened to that portion of the spine webinar, you might want to do so um, to be up to date with where we're going um, from here on out. So when it comes to coding craniotomy procedures, it's usually a lot more simple than coding spine procedures. <clears throat> there is typically just one primary craniotomy code. And the craniotomy codes are diagnosis driven. For example, we have two craniotomy for tumor codes. Uh, and we even have more specific craniotomy for acoustic neuroma codes or meningioma. We have craniotomy for aneurysm codes, crani craniotomy for subdural hematoma, pituitary tumor codes. So that primary procedure code, that standalone code, pretty much describes the entire operation from start to finish, skin to skin. There are some additional codes that we can think about using. The first one is the operating microscope, 69990. Now, this code, the use of the operating microscope for microdissection, um, can be billed with all of the craniotomy codes when it's appropriate. Um, with the exception of 61548, the transphenoidal hypophysectomy code or transnasal transphenoidal removal of a pituitary tumor code includes the microscope, so we would not separately bill 69990. Then we can also look at reporting use of stereotactic navigation when performed. And I discussed in the earlier webinar the requirements for what needs to be documented when um, billing these codes. But the 61781 is for when you do stereotactic navigation to resect an intradural tumor, and 61782 would be for extradural procedure. Now, the stereotactic navigation is included in our CPT codes where the word stereotactic is included in the code. For example, stereotactic brain biopsy and stereotactic placement of deep brain stimulator electrodes. So we would not separately bill 61781, 61782 with those codes. Additionally, we can uh, also think about reporting placing a ventricular catheter through a separate hole. 61107 is for the twist drill hole ventricular catheter placement. 61210 if that ventric is placed through a burr hole. And uh, then we can separately bill for placing a lumbar drain, harvest of graft material through a separate skin incision, abdominal fat 20926, fasciolata 20920 to 20922. If you have an intraoperative MRI, an IMRI suite, there are codes that in the radiology section of CPT where the that the neurosurgeon may separately report. Um, now, some institutions have a rule, though, that only the radiologist can bill those, so you want to double check with your institution. But otherwise, any other intraoperative imaging like ultrasound is included and not separately reported. And then typically the, the last 
item that we think about billing would be placement of 